Welcome to Model Engineers Laser. My name is Holly and this is part eight of our Jack build. In our last video, you would have seen me fitting the exhaust and bending it at the right angle. Uh, we're now gonna go back a stage because that wasn't in the instructions. We are now going to mount these onto the frame. Now, the instructions say to use if I can get the, my fingers in the shot. These two socket cap mounting screws and the washers that are paired with them in the packet. I'm sorry about the background noise of the daughter singing, but it's a standard practice on my videos now. Now, with these, we've got the two holes through here, through the exhaust that we're going to use on our frames. It does say in the, instru in the instructions, through the two outer holes on the four on the main frame. Now, don't forget these instructions are written for the frames that come from Roundhouse. I think the instructions might be slightly out of date compared to the frames because the frames that come from Roundhouse, for those of you using them, still only have two holes. They don't have four. So I wonder if there's been some modification and the instructions haven't been modified to match them but it, it's not a big deal at this point because we've only got two holes and two holes to screw together. So it's just saying, make sure that the washer fits between the head of the socket screw and the frame. The copper exhaust point should be bent forwards and slightly up out of the way we know. So with your, it's going to go on there like that. So now I've got my block the right way and the washer on the screw. You also need the Allen key that comes in the set. Place that. I'm just gonna put the screw in first to start. Yeah. Now, if that doesn't go in neatly, it's probably because you haven't cleared the paint out of the hole to start with. And then you need to locate it in your frame. And in your block, I'm just using my finger type to get it in place. And now it's time for our second one, so I'm just going to put the washer through there and hopefully not get my head in the shape. Attached. There we go. Now it's time to do the other side. And there we go. That is both of the box fitted. Before we go much further, just a word of warning. If you are using a build frame, don't be tempted to get really excited and show off your build frame now to any of your friends by trying to do a 360 with your engine. Because if you undo it and spin it round, your pipes from your exhaust are gonna foul on the bottom. And if you do it too quickly, you're gonna get upset. So yeah, you've got some flexibility in angles, but just be careful if you are gonna go upside down, at this point you are now gonna start fouling on the bottom you have been warned right so you'll have seen that I've now adjusted the camera just so you can see the top here because we're going to now fit the slide valves on the top of the cylinder blocks now I just want to show you the instructions at this point as you can see all of the cylinder block has been exploded out to show you how it's fitted together but actually 
these parts are already assembled for you. We're now doing the top half here with the valve chest and your slide valve. But you are just following the instructions as they are listed in the book. So I've got my instructions here and it says place the slide valve on top of the cylinder block. So these pieces here are the slide valves and they're going to sit on top of your yeah. cylinder blocks. Now this is where a build frame comes in handy because you know that this you can have this sitting level and flat so it doesn't slide about on top of it everywhere for you. Um, the next part of the instructions say one of the lay one of the black valve chest o-rings on the over the top of the slide valve so the slide valve sat in the middle of the o-ring so basically it's telling you to do this and I'm going to do it slightly differently of course I'm going to do it slightly differently because that's the whole point of me doing this video to show you tricks that may help you now what we're trying to achieve is that this is going to sit on top of here screwed in place and there's a slight recess in this section here where that o-ring needs to sit and all the instructions are telling you to do is to sit that centrally so this o-ring can sit in this groove without it pinching that's really important and that needs to sit in the middle this section here is going to sit on there we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment but what it's telling you to do is put that on there to put that on top like this it's saying that's difficult because as soon as you let go, the ring would fall out. Now, a trick to get around this is just to use a little bit of Vaseline to tack it in place. This is Vaseline I've got that I use for my sign writing to keep my sign writing brushes clean. So that is how I'm going to do it slightly differently to the instructions. Just because I think putting that O-ring on the top of there to then faff about it to try and get it to sit as an O and not pinch it as I put that on there is going to be quite difficult. So I'm just going to point out a few things that you're going to want to do before you start putting Vaseline in your O-ring together is on this bit here, this is your valve nut and it has got a flat on it. I don't know if you can just about see that on the camera. The flat needs to sit in the cross of this. Your pipe needs to come out facing your exhaust and this needs to follow the place of your rod so it's going to sit like that with the flat sat in there this is symmetrical so it doesn't matter which way around it goes so that is eventually going to sit on there like that now this is where you want to check that everything's okay because as you can see these are now fouling on that so you're going to have to do a bit of tweaking to get it in the right place again a bit of manipulation to bend those before you start faffing with the the valve in place to get that bent and bear in mind it is only held in place with those two bolts that you've put onto the frame so you don't want to break the bolts but you also don't want to break your exhaust so i might bend that a little as well she says it actually hasn't got strength right so, I'm not going to lie, Ed's stronger than me. I've just got him to bend that a little bit further backwards so that can sit on there and I can line the holes up because otherwise that's going to foul on there. I'm going to have to do the same on that side. So now we've just double checked that actually all the holes can line up and sit nicely. It's now time to fit it all together. So that's going to sit on there. That's going to sit on there and like that because some of these when they arrive as you can see with this one is pushed right down there so don't assume that that's in the right place because it does move up and down quite freely. Get yourself prepared before you start putting it together because you're going to get a bit fiddly and then panic that everything's moving. So before I proceed and actually put that in place, I just want to talk to you about something we are going to do differently to the instructions. It's about the valve chest cover. You'll see on the next page that they've offset their valve chest cover and have put the four screws in. Um, that's to allow for adjustment later. I don't actually know why they've put that there because they're gonna have to take all four screws out to then put the plate back on. So I don't see the point of putting that in there to put the screws on later. So I'm just gonna put the screws in and not bother putting that on until after I finished adjusting later. So that's, I'm going to do that differently to the instructions. So I've got my screws, 
I've got my Vaseline from my sign writing kit. I've got my O-rings. Now it's time to put it all together. So let's get, it just needs a tiny bit because it's not going to affect the operations of it working by just having a little bit of Vaseline. And I do mean the tiniest amount. It's just to make it a little bit tacky for the O-ring to sit in while you're working. There we go. Look, you, you can hardly see what, like a little bit there where it's, where it is just to hold it in place and make sure that it's not gonna pinch. You can run your finger out and it'll sit just nicely in there. So when you turn it over, oh, it doesn't fall out. So you wanna make sure your flat is facing down and that is all in place. Come on. There we go. So now I'm not going to bother with the covers. I'm just going to straight and screw those in just to hold them in place. I'm not putting them on tight. And there's that one. Oh. You can tell it's Halloween because there's fireworks going off in the background. I'm probably going to have them for the next few videos all the way until the new year because that's what fireworks do. So Like I said, I'm just just to hold it in place really they're not tight so you're gonna to have to adjust it later also I don't want to fall them out before that isn't working and the last one goes in like that Right, now I'm going to turn it over and do the other side. Uh, two quick things just before I put the second one on. So the first one is, if you've got like a little sandwich bag or something that you can seal, because you tend to get the extra O-rings and bolts and bushes and all sorts of things that are extra or you need later that are still in the heat seal bag and you just, you're not going to lose them rattling around in the bottom of the box between stages of doing your projects. The next one is, I've just looked at the instructions and after the bit about fitting the covers, there is the section about if you're using the roundhouse gas fire boiler kit and fitting the superheater. And we've come across a challenge with this. So these are the superheaters, this is a superheater here. And then these superheaters are meant to go on the ends of these, like this. I'm going to move that out of the way so you can see because it's a lot. It's quite busy. So these are meant to go on the end of those. So you put the nut on the right way around. The tiny, tiny. Let's zoom in a bit so you can see. Sorry for the dodgy zooming on the camera. So. These fit on the end of here like this with the nut and the O-ring. That O-ring is, I'll put two on there now, really blooming tight, ridiculously tight. And that is gonna be a pain to do when it's in there. Also, as much as the instructions say, it doesn't matter where your exhausts are for now, that also is another lie. Is that in your shot there? Because where you saw me bend these earlier, if you don't bend them enough, you're not going to be able to have enough clearance to get the nut on. So it does matter where your exhausts go because of that. And then I've got to squeeze that onto there 
So again, because it doesn't hurt the engine, I am just going to put a little bit of Vaseline on the end of there to help put that on. I'm probably too much in there actually. It hurt. So I've put the nut on and I need to get that O ring on. Oh, oh yeah, the Vaseline definitely helped on there. That superheater needs to go on there. Now I've pushed it all the way over. I'm not going to tighten it all up until it's all together. So I've got that one there. I've got that here. I wasn't going to show you, film you and putting the second one on, but I think I need to because of putting the superheater on. So that's going to sit on there with my O-ring before I screw oh, I put a bit of Vaseline on that as well. That's where my O-ring is tapped in. Put the nut on. Put on. And <laughs> the O-ring. Flat side down. That the right side of the frames. O ring underneath the noise. And then that also needs to wedge into there. And it's, it's quite a bit tricky. And there we go. I'll go that back a little bit so it's more central between the two. Right. So that side's in. That side needs tightening. That needs tightening. So now I'm going to screw that down. There's a clock, sorry. that's that all in right for this stage it is just a matter of a bit of brute force i'm going to try and do it and keep my fingers as out of shot as i can as possible i'm not very successfully when i look at it Jeez, <laughs> that's tight. 
You're really pushing the look with the clearances on that. These are just the spanners that came with the roundhouse kit. Oh, that was intended. I don't think I've actually got enough grip because I'm a weakling. Ed, would you like to make a guest appearance on my video because I am a weakling? My hyper bendy fingers, I'm just a weakling. So you can make a guest appearance. That's the spanner. I'm trying to... I pushed it so much that I moved the superheater over. Would you like me to push from the other side to stop it sliding? That's one of the problems I had. There's just enough clearance. You got it? Benefit of a build frame, you can put the spanner underneath. Yay! Thank you very much. Just adjust the angle and zoom out a little bit. You can see it all together. So you can really see now that one, it's coming together, two, the position of these exhaust pipes are important, and now this is even taller. You're turning of your build frame is going to be even less than you had before. So just please really be careful as you turn that you're not going to bend these anymore just to make them fragile. And we'll call it that for that this video. Thank you very much for joining us and we look forward to you meeting us on our next video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to our page and we'll see you next time. Thank you.